Hi, it's Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team bringing the word on the street talking Indiana real estate. If you're asking, should I move to Noblesville or the greater Indianapolis area, you may want to take a look at this classic two-story set in a tranquil setting on a cul-de-sac. This is in the very popular Oakmont Woods neighborhood just south of uh, Morse Lake. This one's listed by Century 21 Sheets, but uh, as always, I can help you with any property that's listed for sale in the state. Okay, stepping inside, got a beautiful entryway here. This uh, staircase just goes up and you've got it exposed all the way up to two stories here and it is very pretty. The house just has a real warm feel to it. Right to the left is a dining room, very large, plenty of room for um, hutch, um, buffet table, that type of thing. If you want to put a leaf in there, you can expand it for uh, Thanksgiving dinner. Moving on in, got your main family room. Very warm. Lots of seating in here, really. Classic brick uh, fireplace. Open to the kitchen. Got a nice center island here. You got family dining right here, which is an eight top with the family room beyond it. And then right here, is your passageway into your formal dining room. So nice package. You've got uh, quite a bit in terms of uh, counter space. You have four mica countertops. There are not soft closed cabinets, but there are plenty of them. You have stainless steel appliances, electric range. You've got a classic farm sink. Over here, it looks like we've got probably a pantry. Got a powder room, coat closet, big laundry room with the laundry sink. This is your garage entry, two car finished. And that's very convenient for just bringing your groceries in right here, setting them down. So nice space. Now let's check this out because this may be one of the high points. Beautiful screened in porch. And you have this wooded area at the back of your lot. This lot is uh, two thirds of an acre. So I'm going to assume that that property back here is part of their lot. Very pretty. Private. Nicely done. Heater's a nice touch. Makes it so that you can use it just about year round. First, I guess we should stick our head in the wall door here. Uh, I've got a nice big office right to the right of the uh, stairway. Kind of semi-private too. You could put doors on this and nobody would know it was here if you wanted to shut it off from company. Nice open stairway with the carpeting. Everything's just immaculate in this house. You got crown molding all the way around. Coming down the hall, got one pretty good sized bedroom. Across the hall, we've got another. All these bedrooms just have a nice view. Front yard does too, which is surprising. Big linen closet at the end here. Nice bathroom, tiled, uh, double vanity, granite countertop, new flooring. Another bedroom. This one's a little smaller. Uh, it could be just the furniture's big that's in here. And then we're into the master. You've got a big tray ceiling. It holds quite a bit of furniture. It's a good size. And then you have a very nice uh, bathroom. You got a private commode room. You've got a shower. You've got the big soaker tub. Window is nice. Upgraded uh, bathroom with double sinks. And you got a pretty good size uh, master bedroom closet. So they did a nice job with this. 
and it makes for a very nice master ensuite. We'll catch what the basement has. Okay, carpet stairs on the way down. But it doesn't look like this is finished. Nice hall ceilings, you could finish it and there would be plenty of headroom to do whatever you wanted. Even underneath this uh, HVAC plenum, there's plenty of room. They have uh, framed some rooms. Make it a little easier to finish it up. Right now it's uh, what, a fitness room or a kid's playroom? Lots of space. This house is uh, 2,600 square feet on the upper level and then uh, 3,800 plus total. Okay, this uh, really nice classic two-story with a really beautiful backyard. Um, you got 3,800 square feet total and the ticket on it is $499,900. If you'd like a, a personal tour, just uh, give me a quick call or text. Okay, while we're in the neighborhood, let's take a look at a couple uh, recent sales and also at the great amenity package that there is. Okay, we're in front of 18514 Oriental Oak Court, just down the block from the one that we just walked through. This one's a four bedroom. It's got three full baths, two half baths, it's got 2,379 square feet over a 2,094 square foot finished basement for a total of 4,500 square feet. Take a look at it, it is pretty. And uh, they tell me that uh, this one's got a large great room with built-ins, two-sided fireplace, hardwood floors, and a vaulted ceiling. It uh, overlooks the wooded backyard. Uh, kitchen is a baker's dream. Large island, custom cabinets, uh, mixing stand uh, station, and uh, slow closed shelves. You've got a finished walkout basement with a large family room, full wall of built-ins, a half bath, office area, and a wet bar perfect for entertaining, hobbies, and exercise. Sounds like a pretty nice place. It was on the market for all of three days. Built in 1999, it sold for $510,000. Okay, if you'd like to see how I can help facilitate your success in your next real estate endeavor, and at no cost to you, check out this short video clip that my staff and I have put together because you'll like what it says. Okay, we're in front of uh, 18464 Oriental Oak. Uh, court. This is just down the block from the other two that we just uh, looked at. This one is five bedrooms, three and a half baths. Um, it was built in 2000 and it's got a grand total of 4170 which includes the basement. It's a pretty brick two-story. First level features a spacious office with custom built-ins, uh, dining room, completely remodeled living room and kitchen. Kitchen boasts a huge island seating six updated flooring, lighting, appliances, granite with a modern backsplash, and a stainless steel farmhouse sink. The living room has a gas fireplace, custom ship latch uh, mantle, built-ins, and gorgeous windows overlooking the 0.41 acre lot with uh, no backyard neighbors. Upstairs, you got a primary bedroom plus four others and two full baths. The primary bedroom has vaulted ceilings, mostly updated ensuite bath, and a huge walk-in closet. Throw in the uh, fully finished rec area in the basement with a wet bar and movie space. You just got a whole lot going on. They say this one is 100% over the top. It sold in just four days for $510,000. Hey, if you're undecided about whether you need to buy or sell first, uh, this is not my first rodeo, so uh, uh, be glad to sit down and talk with you, share the pros and cons of uh, going either route that way, and then you can be the judge for yourself as to which is the best plan for your own personal situation. By the way, we offer a free room-by-room -room analysis. I'll be glad to walk through your house. We can share ideas about uh, what uh, you might want to do or might not want to do, because I can basically guarantee I can help you make money and I can help you save money uh, by not doing things that maybe somebody told you that you should. My staff and I have uh, put together a short video that highlights 13 key points that will help you make money when you sell your home. You can check it out right here. Plus, I'll share secrets on how I sold my last five houses in less than 30 days aggregate time. This neighborhood has a pretty nice amenity package. We're talking pool, playground, basketball court, a uh, little park and nature areas and some walking trails. Uh, grand total on the uh, HOA dues on this one is $60 a month. Hey, maybe you heard Zillow just named Indianapolis the fourth hottest housing market in the United States. And good houses can sell fast. If I can be of service, uh, please uh, give me a quick call or text.
Hey, coming up, we're going to do a little map tour, show you the uh, location of all the great things there are to do in the Noblesville area. First, I want to just position this neighborhood in the context of Noblesville. It's located on the north side, maybe northeast, or northwest, excuse me, um, just south of Morse Lake. So from here, you have easy access to Morse or to uh, the town square in probably about uh, 25 minutes to um, Clay Terrace or Westfield or Hamilton Town Center. Kids will attend uh, the following schools, Hazeldale Elementary, Noblesville West Middle School, and Noblesville High School. All of these are rated A by niche.com. Okay, Noblesville has a great deal to offer everybody, no matter what your interest is, it's probably found here. Uh, first of all, let's just talk about overall location. You've got uh, Interstate 69 cutting down the very far eastern edge and then State Road 37 coming oh, east central, okay? And those are major thoroughfares uh, carrying a lot of traffic down into Indianapolis. They join together a little bit south of Noblesville and run down to the Beltway, which is I-465. And from there, you can go anywhere in the metro area you wanna go. Um, or you can stay on uh, State Road 37 and that will take you all the way downtown from the downtown Noblesville is probably about 45 minutes. Um, you have a number of east-west corridors that carry a lot of traffic. You got 146th Street on the southern edge of the town, and then you have State Roads 32 and 38, which cut through it. Uh, you also have State Road 19 that comes down into it from the north. So lots of um, highways that intersect. You'd think it'd be very busy, but it's really not. It has a small town feel, which I don't know, kind of perplexing or whatever, but at any rate, that's the way it is. From a job standpoint, along those major thoroughfares are a lot of manufacturing and distribution center jobs. You can go a little bit further south and you're into Roche Diagnostics, which is a Fortune 500 company. In Noblesville itself, you also have a lot of educational and healthcare opportunities as, where, as well as just basic office and retail uh, opportunities and some construction too. There's a number of uh, uh, paving and gravel uh, road construction type uh, outfits uh, that are pretty good sized in Noblesville as well. Let's talk about schools. The Noblesville school system is ranked in the top 10% in the state. You also have some private school uh, options. Garen Catholic High School is on the uh, far west edge in Noblesville and it is year in and year out it's ranked in the top 5% of all Catholic high schools in the nation. And then you can go south to Heritage Christian School which is right by the Beltway, and that has grades K through 12, and that's a A-rated school as well. And then there's a bunch of other private schools, some of them are affiliated with a church and others are not, but uh, lots of options for, for good schools. Okay, if you wanna talk medical and healthcare, right downtown is uh, Riverview Hospital. It's the oldest hospital in the state that has been county owned. Uh, which is kind of crazy to think that it still is. It's, it's over 100 years that it's been county owned. And then if you go out on 146, you've got uh, um, the Community Health Pavilion, and then you go down by Hamilton Town Center and you got IU Saxony Village and the Peyton Man and Children Hospital. Or you can go the other direction, you can go over to Carmel and you have every major hospital in the area. So uh, tons of medical opportunities uh, that way in terms of hospitals and around each hospital is a, a bunch of related uh, ancillary service buildings like uh, orthopedics and pediatrics and oh, physical therapy and occupational therapy and psychiatric and uh, ah, the list just goes on. There's, there's plenty of health care to satisfy almost whatever your need might be. There are a ton of things to do in the Noblesville area and we're going to do a little Noblesville, Indiana tour here in just a minute, but I'll mention that it has a very uh, well-developed parks and rec department that has uh, a lot of nature trails and then other parks scattered throughout the city. Um, a lot of entertainment for the kids, whether you're looking for climbing walls or cheer camps or whatever, it's probably around someplace close by. And then from a music perspective, uh, you've got, uh, you can go over to Connor Prairie. He has a slate of uh, 12 performances during the summer called uh, Symphony on the Prairie. That's really a good time. It seats over 8,000 people uh, lawn style. Or you can go out to Ruoff Music Center, which is the gem of all uh, music venues in the state of Indiana. 
in 2018, it sold more tickets than any other outdoor music venue in the entire world. And year in and year out, it is in the top five. Uh, so we'll stick our head in the door there and see what's going on. Okay, it's got some really good golf courses. Uh, we'll stick our head in at a couple of those. Uh, you know, one of them really has a full slate of events even for, or activities even for people that aren't golfers. And we'll stick our head in the door at Top Golf too, which is always a good time golfer or not. Shopping and restaurants, there is a ton of shopping in Noblesville, whether you want the big box stores along 37 or you wanna go out to Hamilton Town Center, which is an open air mall. There's also some really good restaurants and I'll give you my top two or three picks so you can put those on your list and enjoy them when you're in town. And by the way, if you've seen some of these segments before, just feel free to bop ahead, but hey, Check in at the end, I'm gonna do a monthly market update so you have some information that'll help you buy and sell profitably. Hey, if you'd like to learn everything there is to know about Noblesville, Indiana, or the greater Indianapolis area, or maybe you just wanna see a house that you've seen advertised, just give me a quick call or text. I'll get you taken care of. Okay, let's go jump in the truck and go do the Noblesville, Indiana tour. Hey, if you're considering moving to Noblesville or the greater Indianapolis area, you'll be sure to want to pick up a copy of our relocation guide. My staff and I have put together the ultimate relocation guide, and it's yours free in the comments section below. Coming up, I'm going to share some of the top parks and recreational activities that are available practically in your own backyard. The city of Noblesville has a very active uh, parks and rec department. So if you look at it by the numbers, hey, there's one aquatic park, one skate park, two community owned golf courses, two splash pads, two parks with pickleball courts, three with basketball courts, six with shelters, six with playgrounds, and eight parks with walking trails. Plus, there's movies in the park, there's concerts on the commons, there's summer activity camps for the kids, and there's lots of other programs for people of all ages. Hey, and then there's my favorite, that's Morse Lake. It's got 1,500 acres, 35 miles of shoreline. There's a marina that's really good, plus there's a public launch ramp that may be the best one around. There's three lanes, traffic moves in and out, pretty darn slick. Okay, you can go and you can swim, you can tube, you can ski, you can fish, or hey, you can just lay back and chill. There's two boat up restaurants that my wife Lynn and I really like to uh, boat up to. There's the Woofies and there's the Swan Dive. Sometimes during the summer, we'll sneak out early on a Tuesday or Wednesday, put the boat in, boat on up to one of the restaurants. Hey, it's a good time. And if you don't have a boat, hey, it can still be a good time. There's Morse Park and Beach, which is run by the county. It's got a beach, locker rooms, shelter houses, picnic tables, and sports of all sorts. There's also a small rustic event center that, hey, it's great for like a wedding reception or something on the low key. But no matter how you slice it, Morse Lake is a great way to spend a day, or every day if you can work it out. Check out these music and entertainment options. You won't believe all the shows you can take in. Okay, our music tour continues. We're at Connor Prairie, which is a large regional uh, tourist attraction. It is open year round. They have a variety of activities, uh, including hot air balloons and, uh, oh, the, what is this, uh, 150 or 200, 200 year old uh, working farm. There's a lot that goes on here. Uh, unfortunately, it's February and we're not gonna get to see a whole lot of it. But so in the summertime, they have what's called Symphony on the Prairie. And the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra puts on uh, 12 concerts throughout the summertime. And all that area back there seats 8,500 people. Um, in 2023, they featured the music of Harry Potter, uh, the Star Spangled Fourth of July. They had tributes to uh, Marshall Tucker, the Fab Four, uh, Journey, Billy Joel, Elton John. Uh, uh, they did a, a Raiders of the Lost Ark um, theme. They just have a lot of fun. And when you come out here, what you do is you uh, you bring your blanket and your maybe your lawn chairs and a picnic basket with uh, dinner or you know, some snacks to eat on and your favorite uh, beverage. And hey, it's a good time, it really is. I know people that have like tickets for the whole season, all 12 nights. I usually make it out once, maybe twice at the most, but uh, hey, I have a busy summer, so, but hey, it is a good time. Okay, let's uh, finish our music tour with uh, the cream de la cream. Uh, let's go look at Ruoff Music Center. This is Ruoff Music Center. Now it's February and things are buttoned up really tight. Uh, they'll probably throw me out if they see me back here, but at any rate, I'll flash you some photos. 
you've got to you got to think about this this seats 25,000 people and uh, they have a complete lineup during the summer of all genres of music all-star lineup you can get a season pass even and uh, ticket sales for this are just out of this world in fact in 2018 Ruoff sold more tickets than any other outdoor music venue in the entire world and year in and year out they're in the top five I mean just crazy now if you get the uh, premier or the legends pass uh, parking passes you can pull right up to the turnstiles you can tailgate you can walk right in and then uh, at the end of the night you don't have to sneak out early you can stay till the very end you catch the encore you walk out it's five minutes to get out of the parking lot and you're another what two three five minutes home hey it's a great time. We're going to stop into two of the area's top golf courses and then check out Top Golf, which is always a great time, even if you're not a golfer. Okay, I'm standing outside the Stony Creek Golf Club, which is one of two that is right in the midst of all these uh, new home subdivisions. This one was uh, built in 1990 by Sam Taylor, a third generation Hoosier designer and operator of courses for the general public. So this is their 25th anniversary. Uh, this uh, club features an 18-hole championship course, a 9-hole uh, par 3, and a nice driving range. It was the first course in the state to offer a junior league and now offers um, all sorts of, or several different leagues. They also offer a couple of neat things. They have a discount pass and a weekday pass and a season pass that come with a bunch of perks that uh, you might want to check out. In addition to uh, Sony Creek, which is a public golf course, there's the Sagamore Club, which is uh, a private club and a whole lot more than a golf course. But it starts with golf. This is a 18-hole Jack Nicklaus signature design course. Uh, in 2004, uh, Golf Digest named it one of the top 10 best new private courses in the country. And uh, last uh, two years ago, they named it one of the top 10 courses in Indiana. In addition to golf, you've got uh, social and activity memberships, you have tennis courts, fitness center, a junior Olympic pool, and uh, a slate of uh, youth activities during the summertime. There's uh, dining opportunities and social activities. Uh, so whether you're a golfer or not, hey, what's not to like? While we're talking golf, let's talk top golf. Uh, this is a Tuesday afternoon in February in the parking lot still has a good number of cars but this will fill up and uh, be crazy about half the time inside they've got a hundred climate controlled bays and this is more like going bowling than it is playing golf i mean you don't have to have your own clubs it's like uh, when you go to the bowling alley and yeah, there's some people that walk in with all the official gear and they've got their own ball and bag and all that and shoes. But, uh, you know, the rest of us go in there, pick a ball out, stumble to the uh, lane and uh, throw it down there. Well, here at Top Golf, um, it's kind of the same. You don't have to have your own clubs. Uh, there's no cost to rent them. Uh, they have all sorts of events and you can see the base here from the outside and then uh, out there into a hitting area. The uh, balls are uh, high tech and they score for you. They do all kinds of events and games. And uh, one of the neat things is there's like a bar and a restaurant. There's 200 TV scattered throughout. And uh, there's even uh, fire pits up on top of the uh, rooftop terrace. So this is great for uh, old birthday parties and uh, other kinds of get togethers, uh, companies, uh, do outings here. Uh, it's a lot of fun and you know, you get to hit a bucket of balls and if you don't want to hit the whole bucket, somebody else will hit yours and uh, you can sit down and drink. Hey, it's a good time one way or another. Join me as we tour amazing shopping destinations plus the fabulous foodie scene. I'll share a couple of my faves so you can add them to your must try list. Get through here, it's got a, just a really wide variety of shops and really good restaurants and in the areas surrounding uh, as well. So tons and tons of uh, retail shops and uh, food places and what have you. Uh,
You've got uh, livery here, which is, oh, I'd call upscale Mexican. It's a Cunningham property and all of their restaurants are great. You've got Ford's Garage, which has uh, oh, really good burgers. And it's kind of interesting, fun place, the, the way some of their marketing and, and just little things like uh, napkins and oh, different things that they do inside that really are kind of interesting, make it kind of fun. You have a total wine for all of your uh, beer and wine needs. You can't find it there. I'm not sure you can find it anywhere. Over here, you got DSW and Ben's Warehouse and oh, just all sorts of different places. I'm gonna take a ride down this little street. Very walkable. You got an old Navy here. Got Lita Express, K Jewelers, Victoria's Secret, Soma. It's a fun place to shop. More shopping than I can do. Through 21, finish line. American Eagle over here. Five guys. Yes. The Three Dog Bakery. My wife spends too much money there. Up on the corner here we have uh, pies and pints. Pretty good pizza, real good salads. Over here is Stone Creek, another Cunningham property, one of my more favorite restaurants. And right in front of us is Dick's Sporting Goods. So just all kinds of uh, opportunity here to satisfy your retail and dining pleasure. Got a big movie theater to go along with it. Turning left into this first subdivision at Town and Country, you've got a Walmart and a Kohl's and some fast food places and oh, uh, Rena Center and just uh, a whole lot more. This has, you know, the usual array of uh, uh, shops or stores. You got a lot of big box stores here, Dollar Tree, Staples. You got a GameStop and a uh, Great Clips, GNC, just, you know, about whatever you want. And we're coming up here on a big Walmart. Got a white castle there for your midnight dining pleasure. You got all the fast food outlets. You got a steak and shake, another bank, Jimmy John's and Starbucks. Over here we have Aldi's, which uh, seems to be hot right now. Another strip center. Subway, nail spas. And we're coming up on Pleasant Street. The uh, post office will be off to the left. You've got some county buildings. And now we're gonna be into another strip center. We're looking at the back of Tractor Supply, another big box store. Kind of fun to go in there sometimes, even if you're not a farmer. Got a Walgreens on the corner. It's Salvation Army Family Store. Hobby Lobby. Big Pet Supply Plus. Another dentist. Aaron's Furniture. And you got the BMV. Always good to know where the BMV is. They actually run a um, pretty good operation. Uh, BMVs used to be atrocious in Indiana, but uh, 
lately of uh, the last 10 years have really come around and now you've got an at-home decorating superstar um, there's just so many places I could keep going and there's there's more uh, I'm gonna turn around and go on the other side of the road now and show you what's over there okay we're crossing back over uh, State Highway 37 and we're on Pleasant Street coming into a whole nother strip center T-Mobile another bank you've got uh, Kalo's uh, Jeep Chrysler Dodge over here okay we're coming up on Best Buy seems I gotta go here all the time for something technical it's usually a pain not because of Best Buy because maybe I don't know what I'm doing At any rate here's a pet smart and it's just one big box store after another. We've got the shoe carnival. And then we've got home goods. Hey, and TJ Maxx now. It's my kind of store. And then you got a Ross. And a Barnes and Noble. So just one right after another. And we're not done because we're coming up to some of the bigger ones. We've got Meyer here. There's a Meyer gas station across the street. There's also a crew car wash over there. If you're not from the area, you'll want to get to know crew car wash. Great operation. I'm going to leave there, drive across the street, see if we can drive by the front of this door without having to stop and spend some money. And here we are at Lowe's. I spend enough here. I have not one, but two credit cards. Just teasing. One's for business, one's for house. And as we come out of here, there's still another couple stores. There's an LA Fitness, there's uh, big goodwill store uh, they do have an open there uh, you don't see too many of those around here but uh, hey there are just so many shopping opportunities along here coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success we're about to put the winter months behind us and enter the spring selling season currently there are 427 homes in Hamilton County with four sale signs in the front yard that's 12% fewer than a year ago, and that's causing prices to remain sticky. Basically, they're unchanged from a year ago with the median price being $420,000. But so right today, you can still find a house for sale for $230,000. Or hey, you can go to the other end of the spectrum, and there's one on the market for over $8 million. Unlike Austin, San Francisco, and Boise, our market has slowed only slightly. A year ago, it took 10 days to sell a house, and now, oh my God, it takes 13 days. Price per square foot has increased just from $165 to $175, and that's basically due to the larger number of new construction homes being sold. Hey, not only is everything brand spanking new, but builders are offering 30-year fixed rate mortgages as low as 4.99%. You might want to give me a call. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday we do a tour of new construction homes for sale. On Thursday we do a walkthrough of existing homes for sale in their surrounding neighborhoods. And on Saturday we give you a feel for what it's like to live in Indiana. So whether you're buying or selling, know that I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. Hey, if you found this video helpful, you'll love this next one. Watch it right now.